Hi guys, welcome back to another reading vlog. Actually, I shouldn't even say welcome back because I don't think I've filmed a reading vlog in maybe half a year, maybe longer. Actually, that's not true. Okay, it's probably been half a year, but we're gonna be doing a reading vlog today because I've been in the worst reading slump maybe of my life. Mm, not my life, actually maybe. I've only read 11 books so far this year, which sounds like kind of good when you say it, but I used to read like 16 books a month. And now we're four months in and I've only read 11 books. And the last book I finished was Bride in maybe the beginning of February. <laughs> I haven't read a book in like two months. And I've tried and failed and tried and failed. I've DNF'd a bunch of books, wait. So I brought conversations with friends with me on vacation and I read this much and then I came home and didn't read anything more. No, nothing against this book, like it was good. I just like am in a slump and this is not the book to read when you're in a slump because if you know anything about Sally Rooney books, it's not really a plot, it just follows characters and they're very slow, which I love, but not when I'm in a slump. So I put this on the back burner and was like, okay, what can I read instead? Apparently the answer to that question was nothing because I read nothing instead. I've just not read since. But I have a large stack of books next to me that we're gonna go through right now. We're gonna be reading over the next week and I'm determined to get out of this slump and that's why I'm filming myself because filming will hold me accountable and make me read. If I just read a bunch back to back, it will re-spark my love for reading, let's hope. Not that I ever like stop loving reading, it's just you know when you get in that mood where you're just like, you kind of fall out of the routine and like I don't, I haven't been reading before bed. I just like haven't been in the zone. Like I used to be locked in. I'd read until I went to bed and then again as soon as I woke up and it was just my routine. I've been so out of that. So we're gonna try to get back in that and let's go through the books I chose. There's a lot here. This is probably the most random stack of books you've ever seen in your life. And that's because I'm a mood reader and I need options if I'm gonna commit to this, okay? Because if I don't have options and I just force myself to read specific books, it's not gonna go well. Let's go through this stack. I have a few options of books I wanna potentially reread because I feel like rereading old favorites is a great way to get out of a slump. So I picked three off my shelf that were really calling my name. First is The Risk from the Briar U series. This is Brenna and Jake's book. I've never reread this book, so I must have read this in 2018, 2019. I'm not even sure. And I remember this being my favorite in Briar U, but I barely remember anything that happened. So I'm thinking this could be a fun reread. Or I have The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. This was one of my favorites a few years back and I never continued the series. So I know this is part of a series and I've only read the first book. So I thought I'd reread the first book and see if I maybe wanted to continue that series. I loved this book. I remember how it made me feel, but I can't remember a lot of what happened. So that's an option. Then this next one, I kind of want to read as like a test for myself to see how my book taste has changed. Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. I read this, I think, when I was 17 or 18, and I gave it five stars at the time. If you know anything about this book, it is about an 18-year-old girl who has a terrible boyfriend, they break up, and she starts sleeping with his father. Now, don't ask me why when I was 17 I gave this five stars, because we're gonna find out when I reread this, okay? If I do. We don't know what I'm reading in this video yet. I saw it on my shelf and I was like, you know what? I think that would help me get out of my slump, honestly. So Birthday Girl is also an option. There's some new releases here. Swift and Saddled by Lila Sage. This is the second book in the series. I think I might start with this one because I remember the first book, Done and Dusted, being so, so, so easy to read. They're so short. You kind of just fly through it. Like it's not like very deep, it's just fun. So I kind of want to start with that one. So we're gonna put that there. Then I have Sable Peak by Devney Perry. This is the last book in the Eden series. I've read the entire Eden series. It's not like one of my favorites of all time, but I do love Juniper Hill. And I've heard a lot of people say that this one is their favorite in the entire series. So I'm excited to give it a try. We'll see. I don't even remember who this one's about. Oh, Mateo. Then when does this book even come out? Oh, the ninth, okay. This is one of my most anticipated reads of the entire year. And when I went to the Sweetgrass author convention, Elsie Silver actually gave me an arc of Wild Love, which is her new book. So I do want to read this before or like on release day. So this is definitely going to be read in this video. I'm very, very excited. If you don't know, Willa from Heartless, which Heartless is my favorite book in Chestnut Springs, one of my favorite books ever. This is about her brother. And I'm pretty sure this entire series is single dad, which is one of my favorite tropes ever. So I could be totally wrong though. Oh, nope, it is true. It is true. Okay, we're definitely gonna read this too. And you guys know small town romances are my favorite. And all three of these are small town found family interconnected standalones. So that will definitely help me get out of my slump. These have been books on my TBR for a while. Actually this one, Larissa's trying to convince me to read. She says I'll love it and I believe her. It's a dark romance though and that's all I know. It's part of a series, but she told me I'll probably not like the entire series because I, do I, don't, I don't vibe with dark romances very well. I'm just, 
a little too soft for all of it but she said i'd like this one so i'm very excited it's one of her favorite books ever she has like this literally tattooed on her body so i'm gonna trust that it's good fingers crossed i kind of want to read it in this video because i think it would help me get out of a slump like if it's really like dark fast paced kind of book not the first thing on the book on the back saying i'm not attracted to men so yeah i don't really know what to expect from this book i might save this for reading a dark romance for a week video if i do another one of those but i also don't want to save it like i kind of just want to read it so again we'll see if i'm in the mood for that another one i i don't know if this one's actually dark but it's butcher and blackbird i've seen everybody talking about it and i'm pretty sure it's about a serial killer or two serial killers there's a knife and a chainsaw on the front which is kind of reminding me of the mindfuck series which is one of my favorite books ever so maybe this i'll give it a chance i don't know then two completely unrelated to that i have before i let go by kennedy ryan which has been on my tbr forever since it came out i love every book i've ever read by kennedy ryan so i don't think that this would be any different and i've just been wanting to read it and i heard it's sad though so i don't know if i'm committed to reading or i don't know if it's sad but like emotional i don't know if i'm in the space to read an emotional book right now but i do want to read it so we're gonna leave it as an option and then the seven year slip this has just been on my tbr forever one of my subscribers annotated it for me so i think it would be fun to read in a vlog and i've been saying i'm gonna read it forever and i haven't so i thought i'd bring it out for this video and see if we get to it but i think i'm gonna sit down and start swift and saddled right now because i feel like i could low-key finish this today or tomorrow if i commit to it so yeah i think this is gonna be what i start with i'm not gonna spoil anything in this video but i am gonna talk about like some plot points I'm gonna sit on my couch and commit to starting right now no excuses except i am gonna scroll on my phone for a second first and nobody can tell me to stop Oh wait, I almost forgot another book. I just bought this specifically for this video. It's still in its Amazon package. <laughs> Forever Never by Lucy Score. I feel like Lucy Score books, I either love them or hate them. So I'm hoping that I'll love this one. I read the synopsis though, and it sounded really, really, really good. And I bought it immediately as soon as I read it. I think it's small town or like it takes place on a small island. And I think it's childhood friends to lovers. I don't know, but I bought it specifically for this video. So I'm adding it to the stack. Okay, I'm not gonna lie to you. I just tried to sit here and start and I I just keep getting distracted on my phone So I think what I am gonna do is listen to the audiobook because I just checked and it's on Spotify not sponsored It's just free on Spotify. So I think what I'm gonna do is just start listening to it And then hopefully like when it gets into like the romance part Like I'll be hooked enough to sit here and read but in the meantime I want to make Pinterest boards and add to my Pinterest boards and scroll on Pinterest as I listen to the audiobook do you think that will help me? I feel like audiobooks are a good way also to help you get out of the slump. It's not even like, I don't know what it is. It's just like I read a few pages and then I stop. And then I read a few pages and I stop. And I think my problem is I'm not invested yet. Like I need to be invested. About a cowboy sitting at the bar. But I couldn't shake the thought entirely. Again and again, we made eye contact for a second too long. I didn't quite know why, but I was drawn to him. Okay, I'm getting invested now. Is this like going to be insta love though? Because why are they already hooking up? They're already hooking up. And I'm like on chapter three. But I don't think she knows who he is. Okay, I just got to chapter six of the audiobook. So I just got to the part where she found out that she's gonna be working for him after they just hooked up at the bar. I'm invested now and I think I'm gonna switch over to actually reading. That didn't take long. This isn't giving insta love, but it is giving boy instantly obsessed, which is not always my favorite. I kind of like more of a buildup than this, like feelings wise. Like he's obsessed with her. Like why am I in chapter eight? Like I'm only this far in and he's saying, I had to ignore the sound of my heart cracking. You do not know this woman. You do not know her. I forgot how much I can't wait for Gus and Teddy's book. When does that shit come out? Oh, I'm so excited for their book. They just started talking about Gus and I remembered it's gonna be single dad trope, enemies to lovers. Oh my God, I need it so bad. This is like, I can't, it's not insta love, but like I said, like this is just moving a little too fast for me. Like I'm on page 80. She just opened up already about like her past trauma, even though she's the one that like isn't wanting to date him, but he just taught her how to drive. And now she's already like talking about her ex-husband. Guys, slow it down. Actually, maybe this is good. Maybe this is a good way to get me back into reading that it's all happening very quickly. Personally, I love a slow burn. If you guys know any slow burn recommendations that you can give me that aren't Mariana Zapata because I've read like all of her books and not Married for One because I've already read that, I need more slow burn. Like no one else does slow burn like them. And this is making me realize that that's what I need. Cause like, I'm just don't get as invested when I'm not like rooting for them. I'm like, oh, this was easy. I'm actually making a, di a big dent. I'm on page 85. Okay, I just got to chapter 13, page 100. I thought that was a good place to stop for now. I've been reading for like over an hour. 
and I didn't stop. So I think I'm back in the groove. Actually, I can't even say that because I've read one time. That's the most I've read in over a month, so I'm proud of me. I'm gonna take a little bit of a break and I'll see you soon. Okay, I'm back. I just ate and now I'm reading again, but I like this book so far. Like, I'm really enjoying reading it, but I also feel like it's like fluffy and fun, but I also feel like they're kind of just glazing over everything. And then it's like, like I said, insta love, insta lust. Like there's nothing deep going on. Not that I expected there to be, but I feel like they like touch on some topics and then it just like goes right over. Like it doesn't have much substance. Kind of just feeling like they're obsessed with each other already. I'm not even halfway. So I'm gonna be bored if that's the vibes we're gonna continue on. Good morning, everyone. It's the next day. Um, I read last night, but I didn't update you because I was in bed. My camera was out here. I was comfy and cozy. I thought I'd just update you in the morning. I'm on page 210, chapter 23. I like this book. Like, it's very cute and it's doing what it needs to do, which is get me to finish it but nothing special again still the same feelings i think right now i'm gonna go into town and walk around and stuff and i'm gonna listen to the audiobook i honestly might finish it because i listen to my audiobooks in like two times speed so i'll update you either out or when i'm back but i'm hoping to finish whenever i listen to an audiobook and read at the same time i feel like i just like grind the book out so i feel like that's the best way to go right now with how slow i've been reading okay i just realized how many actual books that i could include in this video that i have right here all these new releases some of them aren't new anymore but they're new to me i haven't read them magnolia parks into the dark king of sloth by anna huang funny story by emily henry and just for the summer by abby jimenez these are probably some of my most anticipated books of the year and i'm not gonna include them in this video because i'm I'm launching a book club on patreon and i want to include these books as the first month's cho like to choose from so if you guys want to join the book club there's a free member option there's three tiers there's a space for everyone depending on what you want to do there's a free member tier a book club tier and a best friend tier if you want to go on my patreon it will be linked down below there's a full video explaining every single tier breakdown you can also go on the patreon and we'll have the tiers broken down for you what's included i've been working on this i've been thinking about it for years and working on it for the past few months and i'm so excited because it's finally going live as this video is going live, my Patreon is going live. But the book club tier is going to include a book group chat that I'm going to be fully active in. I literally have the notifications on on my phone to be texting in. If you want like book besties to buddy read with, to talk to about books, anything and everything book related, you can join the book club tier. I will be asking for recommendations. I will be talking about books, but I'll also be posting book related content. So once a month, a full video wrapping up the book club book of the month that you guys will be voting on in the chat. There also will be chapterly updates if you're in the best friend tier. If you're in the best friend tier, you're also in the best friend group chat, which is going to be like a private Snapchat story mixed with a best friend group chat. I will be texting it all the time. I have a really, really exciting event coming up this week and I need outfit help and I'm already planning on using the best friend group chat for that. I want to do story times, Q and A's, unedited videos, extra content, early release of my YouTube videos will be in the best friend chat. I'm just really excited. It's going to be a place that we can all hang out and I thought I would introduce it now because I just realized how many books are going to be on the roster for this first month. So if you want to check that out, I'll link it down below and I can't wait to hang out and just be best friends with you guys and like talk to you all the time and finally have a place where instead of talking at you, I'm actually like interacting with you and I think it's going to be the best time and I'm so excited it's finally out. Good morning. It's the next day and I do have some updates for you. Sit back down here um i finished swift and saddled final review i think i'd give it three and a half stars three stars like i recommend it as the series in general but as a book on its own it was good like i don't hate it and i don't have any like dislike towards it but it was just like it was good it was okay didn't change my life but yeah a little summation it was about the brother of a girl from the first book the middle brother he has his like sight set on he wants to open i think it's like a guest house or like an inn kind of on their family ranch and his dad finally gives him permission to do it and then they bring in this designer from the city who is the girl love interest which is the part where they lost me a little bit because they barely talked about the whole renovation process even that was that was the whole point she was there and that's what she was supposed to be doing the entire time it was barely talked about but anyway she came in she's from the city they end up like hooking up in a bar one night when she first got there before she knew who he was and who he didn't know who she was so they kind of had like this like little chemistry moment and then she showed up the next day to meet her boss and it was him it was boy obsessed like he was so obsessed with her there was no build-up in that regard like he wanted her from the first second that they kissed in that bar she was more like i work for you like i'm gonna keep my distance but that didn't last long either they were together pretty much this whole book then last night 
I decided to pick up Forever Never by Lucy Score because now in hindsight I probably shouldn't have started this one because it's very similar I think to this kind of vibe just because it's like small town so not really but I, I'm on page like what page am I on 48 so far so good basically what I know so far is this girl her name's Remy she grew up on Mackinac Island which is like off of Michigan I think like a little tiny island she lives there year round she has this like guy that she's been in love with since she was 16 but he's like never reciprocated feelings for her and he's like super serious whatever his name's Britt and this is from both their point of views except it's very obvious that he's also been in love with her but he doesn't show it at all which I like that's what I like he doesn't show it at all because he feels like it's inappropriate he's like eight years older than her um but now they're in their 30s so like it doesn't matter and then she is going through something I don't know what it is there's a reason she came back to Mackinac Island she used to live in Chicago she came back with a broken arm and she's like very different than how she used to be like she used to be fearless and crazy and now she's very like scared so Brick is trying to figure out why she's scared like someone is after her or something which I like that kind of plot line too because he's getting really protective I'm hoping this is slow burn because this is really long like this is a really long book so if this isn't slow burn I'm gonna be pissed but so far I'm getting the vibes that it is because he's very not showing he's in love with her at all but she's moving in the house right across the street from him so I'm excited to keep reading this I'll keep you guys updated um, I'm outside I decided to come to the park to read and it is so nice out it is the UV was out of 10 which is why I came here nobody here but me. I'm gonna sit here and read I'm gonna keep you updated um, so far I really like it but I mean I'm not very far in guys so far this book is really, really good like I'm very much into it because it's giving slow burn. Like I'm almost on page 100 and I don't think they've touched yet. The pining and the longing that is going on in this book right now. This is everything I needed. It's been a while since I last vlogged. It's actually the next day. Oh my God, there's like sand all in my camera. What is going on? But I do have updates about the book and I fear it might be putting me in a slump. Also, look how cute my PJ set is. <gasps> okay i think the last thing i said was that i was obsessed it was so good and it was it's still good but the characters started hooking up and they won't stop and i'm less than halfway so that's i thought it was a slow burn basically like their reason for not being together is so stupid and infuriating to me there is no reason for them not to date but like they somehow both come up with reasons why they can't date but like they can have sex i'm like what is going on they're hooking up they're literally hooking up like rabbits like they will not stop it's every chapter like all they do is have sex i'm like do you, uh, can you guys have a conversation like what happened to good old-fashioned hey how are you how was your day i was reading and i was like this is annoying this is annoying and this is annoying i'm skim reading the chapters at this point because i'm like they're literally just having sex i don't know if this is part of the plot or if this is gonna be the rest of the book because i'm kind of annoyed like they haven't talked about anything serious like why did he marry her best friend can we can we jump to that why how have we not talked about that yet yet you're having sex can we go back to the plot like what is she doing like, what is going on i'm so annoyed so like i feel like this might be putting me in a slump but i'm gonna try to push through more but if I feel it dragging more to where I just don't want to pick it up because that's how I felt for like a while now, like I just don't want to pick it up, then I might have to jump to something else. We're going to try to push through. So I'm going to read right now. I'll keep you updated and let's hope that they have a conversation or something because I need that. <laughs> I think I jinxed it. Cause like, why is it low key getting worse? I'm just bored. It's dragging. It's too long. Like I've read like 50 pages since the last update and I have nothing more to add. I'm bored. And the plot is could have been so good. I feel like if she would have shortened it like a hundred pages, if she would have taken out this much of the middle, it would have been probably a five star. Am I bored because I'm in a reading slump or am I bored because it's not good? Like, I don't know. Like, there's like side plots going on. Like, I don't know, but they won't go back to the main plot. The characters won't have a conversation. It's pissing me off. I still, how do I still have over 200 pages left? Good morning. It's the next day. I finished my book and I want to talk to you guys about it. I have such like mixed feelings because it was, I don't know how I feel. Last I talked to you, I think I was like in my hating it era. But then I look back on it with like semi-fondness. I think I'd give it three stars. Like I would recommend it. It's just too long. 
there was too much in the middle of like smut going on which is just not my style and then even the plot started getting like a little like off track i was just really wanting to get to the plot line of like the crazy guy and then they were just like kind of ignoring the plot and i was like guys like we have important things that we need to get done and i kind of just like skim read the last like 25 percent not like i actually read it but i was like speed reading like i wasn't like locked in when i tell you that they were literally having sex in every single chapter i'm not kidding like it could be the most deeply emotional chapter like them finally having a heart to heart and then they're doing it and i'm like guys i don't care anymore about you guys doing it and then i felt like even the plot started to drag a little bit just because it was so long if you guys have read lucy score books like if you read um things we never got over and like that whole series it's very similar to that it has the same structure like the build up where it feels slow burn then they get together and there's a plot and then there's like crazy action happening that's just like really unrealistic like shooting and killing and hijacking boats and stalkers and all this crazy plot going on at the very end which i feel like happens in a lot of her books so if you like that you'd probably like this as well um i kind of liked that side plot because it was taking away from like all the boring stuff that i didn't really care about but yeah overall i think i give it three stars because i think up until like halfway i was really loving it and then once they got together it was downhill it just in someone who prefers when they get together when there's this much left it almost did put me back in a slump if i wasn't filming this video i would not have read that this that quickly that probably would have taken me two weeks to finish wild love is about to come out i think it comes out the day after tomorrow so we're gonna start reading this today elsie silver is one of my like i've read every book by her like i love her so much everything that she comes out with i want injected in my veins i'm sure this won't be any different because this is a spinoff of my favorite series by her which is chestnut springs we're gonna start this today i don't have that many plans so hopefully we can get a decent chunk in like i want to finish this tomorrow because i want to finish it before it comes out i've been reading and <laughs> i've been giggling and kicking my feet i love it so much so far so basically it's a single dad trope which i knew but i didn't expect what this one is i'm not even gonna say it because like i don't want to give anything away but like this isn't what i thought the single dad trope was gonna be i'm not mad about it she's not what i expected also um i hate men like she got fired from her job because of a disgusting freak man but it is gonna be the catalyst for our story i think because now she's going back to her hometown where he lives it's brother's best friend trope which i didn't know and i can already tell i'm gonna be obsessed with this book from their first interaction on that doorstep this is gonna be the book that saved me elsie silver is gonna do it i can feel it and i'm literally barely into this book he said all it took was one look one heartbeat and i was 18 all over again oh i'm so excited that makes me want to literally cry tears of joy okay this trope is actually really similar to this trope like the coming back into town had a crush on you since childhood and i love that so much oh my god i'm so excited right now that single quote also he's a billionaire and they are living on a ranch but it's like he's building a studio out in the countryside something they keep saying over and over again in this book is that ford is like super awkward and like he was dorky when he was young and like he's just like an awkward socially awkward kind of guy but i just don't see that at all like he's not giving awkward to me at all i'm not getting that vibe oh she's gonna be working for him also she has a boyfriend guys he kept her diary or he went back and found her diary oh this is gonna be so good we better get some entries about them as kids their dynamic is so good elsie silver is so good at writing romances the flirting the banter the emails the working together oh my god i've been giggling and kicking my feet for the past like hour straight she wrote in her journal like that one time she was out and then she called ford when she was younger to pick her up from a party and she was like crying or something and she was like he must have already been out because he got there in only five minutes and then he goes that journal entry is fascinating but it's all wrong i was at home when you called that night and i broke every speed limit to get to you oh <laughs> update on my reading um also ignore what i look like i've been cleaning my apartment and that's the sound of the dishwasher if you can hear it i've read so much i'm on chapter 27 and i don't want to like spoil anything i really really recommend this i think you guys should read it if you've read chestnut springs you'll love this it's, it feels like another addition to that series you guys know i've said it many times acts of service is like my main love language like when people remember things about you and apply it to make your life easier <laughs> or just like to show that they were thinking of you or like being thoughtful that's my love language and this man ford grant is probably up there with ryan shay on acts of service book boyfriends like he remembers every little detail like she mentioned one time that she has like this favorite chip that she like always likes to eat but they're like out of stock or out of production or something and he was like i have to go run an errand and then he literally 
blue or like imported in this specific brand of chips like 200 pages later in the book or something because he just remembered that he remembers every little thing she said that's just like one of the many many examples of him being so thoughtful they've even said like he shows his love he doesn't like say it even though he does say it too i'm also loving the build-up of this because like they're together but they're not but they are and it doesn't feel rushed at all and i'm just i love it i love them okay i'm almost done i've literally just been sitting here binge reading like i can't stop and i just came to say that this is the book that saved me from my slump because this is the first time i felt like i want to continue reading i could have read this in one sitting like i can't put it down i want to read i've been thinking about it non-stop all i want to do is read i'm at chapter 37 and i'm just I just love it so much. Back in my talking spot on the ground to tell you that I finished and my overall thoughts, I think I'm gonna give this one a four and a half or like 4.75. I don't love it quite as much as I love Heartless, but I think it was so, so good. It's probably like equal to how much I love Flawless by Elsie Silver. Like I love them both. I love them. I love this couple. I love the story. I love the buildup. I love the way it was done. The quotes were so good. Like the buildup, the relationship in this book is like exactly what I love in a romance. Like the banter, the chemistry, but still having a kind of slower buildup. The brother's best friend trope is gonna do it for me every time. The feeling like they can't be together. Small town, like all of it is just what I love. Single dad, like she actually wrote this book for me. I really, really recommend it. If you haven't read it yet, you should. This one feels like it saved me from my slump, but we can't be sure. I feel like you have to read like two or three books back to back before you can be like, I'm out of my slump. But this made me feel like I want to read. Like this made me feel like I love reading again. So I think what I'm gonna do is reread an old favorite now. I think I'm gonna pick up The Risk by L. Kennedy. This has just been calling my name for months now. Like I wanted to reread. I reread The Deal last year and The Deal and The Risk are my two favorites in the Briar universe. So I think I'm gonna reread this one now. This book is gonna take me so quick because the, the, literally the font is huge. It's such a short book and because i've already read it before i like not gonna have to focus as hard so i think it's just gonna be a fun read also i have the audiobook on audible so i'm gonna go listen to it today while i go on my walk and then i'm like just to start it then i'm probably gonna come back and read but yeah i think this one i'll be able to get through quickly and it's the one out of all my rereads that was like speaking to me the most and i feel like i'm in the mood to reread something i feel like i don't give myself the pleasure of rereading very often because i feel like i need to be reading new books to talk about on my channel but this year my goal was to read for fun and not to read for work like i want to read and let it feel like I'm reading for fun. So I want to reread a lot of books this year and I haven't yet. The only book I've reread this year was The Wall of Winnipeg. So now I'm going to reread this one and I think I want to reread some of the Addicted series books and the Boys of Tommen books this year. Speaking of Boys of Tommen, Taming 7 comes out this week. So I think I'm going to continue this vlog until Taming 7 comes out. Uh, I pre-ordered the book so it should come on delivery day. I mean it should come on release day. So I think we'll read this and then we'll read Taming 7 together. I won't spoil anything, I promise. Especially with that one, I will be very, very vague. I don't even think I think I'll like give a lot of updates. I'll probably just give my overall thoughts because I know we at Boys of Tom and Stans are cult following. We don't want to hear any spoilers. So I think that will be the next book we read. But for now, I'm going to go on my walk, listen to the risk, and I'll come back and update you. Okay, I just got back from my walk and listening to my audiobook. So I thought I would update you. It is so nostalgic being back in like Briar U off campus world. Um, and I literally forget everything that's happened in this book. Everything that's happened so far. I literally barely remember anything. I like remember the settings I created in my head, but I don't remember like any of the plot line or how they met or anything. So this has all been such a brand new like experience. I've actually made a decent chunk in. I'm on chapter 10, um, page 91. And in this book, I'm just realizing has my OG annotations from like 2018, whenever this came out, when I first would annotate books in pink highlighter when I was in high school. But yeah, basically I just got like through the introductions. Brenna is one of my like favorite girl characters ever just cause I wish I was her so bad. Having that kind of blind confidence in yourself, like knowing you're the shit is something that I wish I possessed. Like being able to go up to any guy, say whatever you want to him, act however you want, like literally sit right on his lap is crazy. Like she was just doing it to Jake's teammate to show that she could after he told his teammate he couldn't hook up with her anymore. The one thing about the off-campus books that I always remember and I always think about and like rereading it confirms it. I feel like the main girl characters are always kind of like, I'm not like the other girls vibes. And then they're all the girl side characters are like, how do I explain it? Written like they're dumb or written like they're not, I don't know. Like I just listened to the scene where Jake is standing in his kitchen and a girl comes down and she's literally fully naked, comes downstairs and is talking to him and basically asks if he wants to have a three way and like all this stuff. Like just things that would like never really happen. Like the way that girls behave in these books towards guys, like they are so obsessed 
I'm like, girls in real life are not that obsessed with men. They would never throw themselves out of men. A walk down the stairs naked is crazy. And I've always felt that way when I read these books. I'm like, they just seem like desperate and like they want these hockey players so bad. And then the scene where Brenda's talking to a guy at the bar and Jake just walks up to her and like starts kissing her and pretending to be her boyfriend. He's so obsessed with her. I, and it's so fun reading this because it's like I'm experiencing it for the first time. Like I literally forgot all of this happened. So yeah, that's where I'm up to so far. Okay, I'm here with another update. Um, I'm on chapter 20. I'm at the part where he is sneaking into her house, like throwing rocks at her window. They're so cute. I love them so much. This relationship is like the only friends with benefits I've ever really enjoyed. Not even that they're friends with benefits, but like they kind of are. I just love them. And I think it's nostalgia because like this book is not like the best piece of literature I've ever read. Not that I read literature, but like it still has me giggling and kicking my feet. And I just love the whole dynamic of the friend group. I think that's what I love about it so much too. But yeah, I'm at the part where he's sneaking in her room and they like kind of hook up for the first time, but then her dad walks in. I completely forgot about the whole like subplot with her ex-boyfriend and how he's like an addict. They like mention it one time, but I remember now what happens later that I completely forgot about. I like completely forgot about most of this book. Also Hazel, like his best friend, that's so obviously in love with him and he has no idea. Forgot about her too. I know I just said this, but I literally forgot about this whole like Hazel plot line where she like comes up to Brenna and is like, what are your intentions with him? Like what a freak. First of all, as a friend, no one would do that. And she's like being so rude and weird. She's jealous. She also didn't get the internship. Like she heard back from them, from those terrible men. This is the second book I've read in this vlog where men in the workforce are terrible and disgusting. Seems to be a pattern. Also, she like tried to kind of break up with him or like end things or like pull back a little bit. And he was just like, no, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> Like, I know you like me. Oh, I want him so bad. I wish he was real. I finished The Risk and I'm here to give my final thoughts and updates, even though I've already read this book. I give it a four out of five, which I think I probably would have rated it back then somewhere around the same. Like, I really love it for what it is. Like, it's fun, it's cute. Like, one of the complaints I have though, I completely forgot about the whole like storyline with her ex boyfriend and he's like a struggling addict. And the way they talk about him is so mean. Even Jake is like, pathetic loser people are not very nice but i did really enjoy it and i was giggling kicking my feet the whole time as you saw this made me want to reread the entire series which i won't right now but i might over time <laughs> i feel like all these books though like they have such a similar style with like the third act breakup like it, it's very predictable i feel like this is the kind of book where like i can't read them back to back to back to back because that's what i was doing last year and i was just like Ugh, every book feels feels the same but when you spread them out they hit they hit the spot if you've never read the off campus of Ryrie series yet which i feel like everyone and their grandma and their goldfish has read it I would recommend. I feel like it did hit significantly different when I read it when I was 17 because I was 17 and I was like just getting into the genre. So I thought it was like God's gift to earth, but I still think it's like worth the read. Like I love the found family aspect. I love the sports aspect. That's my final thoughts on this. I sped finished this because this just came in the mail and I want to start this. I have like no time to read today, so I'm not going to start now because I know if I start, I'm going to want to continue. The only thing that I'm noticing right off the bat is this book is so much smaller. Wait, let's go look at my other ones. Than the rest of the series of the books I have. And I don't know if that's just because I have the OG published version. Look how thick this is. Okay. <laughs> and then look at this. Look at the difference. I'm so annoyed that I have like different versions now. I'm so excited about this. It's probably my most anticipated book of the entire year. This and the Emily Henry book, which also comes out in like a week. But yeah, we're going to start that soon. I'll see you when I start this. Hi everyone. I have to sit down and talk to you because <laughs> I re-entered my slump, not even on behalf of any book's fault, but it was completely and entirely my own. I haven't read in a week and a half, maybe two weeks, because there's just a lot going on and that's not even an excuse. Not that I need an excuse. I can, I, the whole point of reading is for fun. So I'm not gonna like get mad at myself, but I think because my next read is Taming Seven and this was my most anticipated read of the year, I always was like, I need to have the perfect moment to sit down and read. If I just have 30 minutes before bed, I'm not gonna start because I'll only be able to read a few chapters, I'll be tired, I won't remember it, whatever my excuses were. Or like if I was going to the beach, I was like, again, I'm not gonna be able to focus. Like this is a book like I wanna sit down and dedicate time to. Therefore, just days passed where I wasn't finding the perfect moment that I could just sit down for hours and binge. So I just haven't read. But 
Today, I have no plans. It's gonna happen. I wanna get halfway through this book today, if possible, just to get me back in the groove of reading, not let myself like fall off into the slump again. And I'm really excited because after I read this one, I have the new Emily Henry book to read. I have the new Abby Jimenez book to read. So I have a lineup. So I'm not like worried about falling back in a slump. I'm gonna update you probably a lot less with this book. I'm sure a lot of you have read it by now because now it's been out for weeks, but I know how people are so passionately like not wanting to hear anything about this book. So I'm gonna try to be careful. I succeeded my goal of reading for a little bit. It's been like an hour and a half and I'm gonna keep reading. I just wanted to update you like my general thoughts. My general thoughts so far is it's kind of what I expected as far as like, they're basically already together. They've been together in all the previous books. So I'm a little nervous for how that's gonna make me feel in this book, but I really hope that it leads to like a lot of pining and like angst and stuff because right now I'm not really understanding why they're not together and why she doesn't just like ask him because it's obviously him that's not wanting them to be together. But like, that's not the thing is like, he wants them to be together, but like he refuses to cross the line of actually like, kissing her or doing anything, yet they sleep in the same bed every night and like tell each other they love each other. So he obviously has like an intimacy thing. There's obviously something deeply wrong with Gibbsy. I feel so weird calling him Gibbsy because she keeps calling him Gerard and then I'm like, I don't know what to call him. There's something wrong with him. We don't, I don't really know what it is yet. That goes way deeper than his dad and sister dying. Obviously that is a lot of his trauma, but there's something deeper going on that is making him put up a wall. And it's kind of frustrating me because like they're acting like they're together and like both of them aren't acknowledging the fact they're not together, but like Claire's obviously upset by the fact they're not together. I love the friend group so much though. Like that's one of these things like, I feel like these books could be like the worst book I've ever read and I'd still like give it a three star because as long as the friend group is all there and I feel like I'm back in the Tommen universe, then I'm gonna love the book. So I'm gonna keep reading. I'll be back. Here I am again, next update. Um, it's been like an hour since my last one and I have a lot more to say. But the main thing is with Lizzie, not to like give anything away, but I've already had like issues with her in the past books because she's obviously like the mean friend. Like she's always been like that, but that's because she like, Everyone gives her a pass, like she's dealing with trauma, her sister passed away. But this book, like it's actually upsetting me, like she is being evil. Like actually like not even like a bad friend or mean or like traumatized, like she's evil, the things she says in this book. And like, I don't know how anyone in this friend group is still friends with her. Like if this was in real life, and one of my friends was saying the shit she's saying to me and my friends continued being friends with her, I would not be friends with any of them because she is terrible to Gibsy. The things she says, first of all, Gibsy had nothing to do with her sister dying and she knows that. She knows that it wasn't anything to do with him. And Gibsy knows even deeper, like obviously there's more to the truth that we need to uncover. And I think that's gonna lead to his trauma. And I'm already starting to put together and assume what I think happened. The things she says to him are so downright evil and disgusting that I don't even want her book anymore. I know you're hurt, but the the things you are saying are so vile. I don't even wanna say it. Cause like, I don't know if that counts as a spoiler, but the thing she just said is just so disgusting. The fact that she knows too, it's not like Gibsy killed her sister or was even the person that was like, it just makes no sense to me. And I don't know why, especially Shannon is like defending her and like all the friends are like in the middle. And then I can see the emotional cheating going on with like what's gonna come in the next book with like Hugh and her. I started liking her in the six books, like in Saving Six and Redeeming Six, I started liking her cause she was helpful to Joey, but like then this just made her so much worse. I can't wait for Feely's book though. I think he's such a sweetheart. And I really wanna know where they're gonna go with that character. I do really want him to be with Katie. And I wanted there to be a love triangle with Lizzie, Feely, Katie, Hugh, I guess I love Square. I don't think we're gonna get that, but I really wonder what we're gonna get with him. I'm like this far in now, and I just feel like it's not dragging a little bit, but it's very much just the same. They're dating, but they're not dating. Lizzie's causing problems. They're screaming at each other. We don't know what the real trauma is. We don't know why he won't date her. We don't know why he won't open up. We know some suspicious stuff is going on with his, his family. And it's just a lot of back and forth. Not really any progress is being made, and they're not really talking about it. And I just kind of want them to talk about about, at least talk about why they're not dating. I just feel like it's dragging on a little bit now. Guys, I'm on an absolute grind. It's like 4 p.m., 4.30 in the afternoon now, and I started this as soon as I woke up. This is what I needed. It's like a therapy day, but anyway, I spoke too soon in the last update because in literally the chapter after I stopped, Claire was like, I think they're playing a game, and like she started crying, and she's like, why don't you love me the, in the right way? Like, whatever, and like in his point of view, he's just like, I'm terrified, whatever. So it's definitely a deeper trauma. I need him to open up. It's dragging. 
dragging too much like i don't remember what happened in the other books but for some reason i feel like the trauma didn't like take so long to come out like i feel like they were able to work through it together and in this i feel like i'm so far in and like she knows nothing not that their friendship is surface level because they're obviously like best friends but like i feel like claire doesn't really have anything like this book is very much gibsy okay like claire doesn't really have anything that she's wanting to tell him like the author didn't give her much of a backstory that's what i'm getting so the backstory is coming from gibsy and he's not opening up at all so they just like i'm like do you guys know each other on like a deep personal like trauma level like they don't and like they know how to be there for each other and they love each other but he's not open with her at all lizzie's still being lizzie actually it's getting worse it is pissing me off it makes me not even want to read because i dislike this whole like narrative with her so much and i really believed in this book that we were going to get a redemption arc after the way she kind of was redeeming herself with the joey stuff but she needs to go to therapy put that girl in therapy there are no excuses i don't care what happens in your life to be treating your friends this way also i really am loving the gibbsy johnny friendship i always have but this scene where johnny's kind of like what that lady is doing with you like the lady from the office is wrong i need him to open up even in his point of view like even if claire doesn't know like we need to know because i'm starting to get you guys know i talk about all the time one of my pet peeves is when there's something going on in the book that they keep referring to but the reader doesn't know about and I feel like I'm getting that vibe from this book. Like they keep being like, something is obviously deeply wrong with Gibsy, and like they keep talking about it, but won't say what it is. And that just pisses me off. Like, like I don't know, I don't enjoy that where you don't get to find out till the end. Um, even though I've kind of put it together in my head what I think it is. I had to live update chapter 30, where they finally like had some kind of physical thing happen. <sighs> it's not what I wanted. But like, it'll do. I need him to open up. Oh, I'm getting so pissed off. But I think I am gonna stop reading now. I just read the entire day. I'm this far in. Good morning. I was just sitting here reading my coffee. Reading my coffee. I'm not awake yet. Drinking my coffee and reading my book. I don't know how much I'm gonna read right now, but I'm finishing today. Okay, I'm determined. I want more Joey in this book. More Joey and Aoife. Aoife is a little bit like hanging out with the girls, but I miss Joey. He's like my favorite. I love him so much. Claire is going to Lizzie's parents. Which maybe, I feel like that is the responsible thing to do, but I know that Lizzie's gonna tweak out on her. Oh, oh, Lizzie is so fucking annoying. Oh my God. Her saying he didn't even apologize about Gibsy. What do you want him to say to you? He didn't even do anything. And I understand where she's coming from, like why she's upset, cause what she thinks happened. But why is she blaming it on him? That makes me hate her. Now Mark is in town. What is going on? Bro, I can physically feel Claire's frustration trying to get through to him when he's like trying to be all funny and like he doesn't care about anything and her begging him to just like be normal and open up to her and he's not doing it i needed claire to go out with someone else to see how he would react this is what i wanted this is gonna put his ass in motion i think let's hope oh i'm crying oh i'm crying <laughs> this conversation they're having when she just got home from being with what's his face whatever date she was on this conversation my heart he just needs to be with her already because they're both just hurting each other now okay i understand that he has trauma and i'm figuring it out probably what happened which is awful but they're really dragging it out like can you just fucking say it or talk about it or do something because now we're in a circle of i want to be with you i want to be with you too okay do something i can't why I'm not telling you. Circle again. They keep going in circles and now I'm starting to get pissed off. Either open up or stop saying that you want to be with her. <laughs> like, okay, I finished. Back to our recap spot. But before I get into all these other books, I need to talk about this. First of all, before we even get to my final thoughts on this, when the POV changed in the last chapter, Oh my heart. I stopped updating because I don't want to give any spoilers for like the ending and all that. But overall, I think I'm gonna give this book 3.75 stars. I've given all the other boys of Tom and five. This is the first one that isn't. I still loved it and I love Gibbsy and Claire and everything. I just, everything I said, the book was kind of going in circles. I don't really love having to wait to the end to find out everything. Lizzie was annoying me. I just felt like it wasn't up with the other ones for me. Maybe because the other books, there's two for each couple. They're longer, they're more in depth. I feel like this one, like Claire didn't really have any like backstory. Like we, we didn't get a lot on her. It was mostly focused on Gibbsy and then his whole story and like a lot of just the back and forth with Lizzie. Like she was the antagonist of this book. I don't know. It's just not what I like was hoping for. I give it 3.75 stars, but like out of all of these books, this one was like my, like the most special to me. So like then I don't know what to rate it, but 
I, I would say like overall, I'm gonna give this one 3.75. That is gonna be the end of this reading vlog, I think. I read one, two, three, four, five books over the past few weeks. That might not be impressive to you, but I'm proud of myself because I was in the worst slump ever. I'm gonna be fine now, especially now that I have a book club. That will help me. That will hold me accountable. I'll have to read. And if you're in a slump, good luck because it's not fun it's so hard especially when reading is like your favorite thing to do but then like you're not doing it and then you get anxious about the fact that you're not doing it and then you're like why am i getting anxious about not doing my hobby that's just a me thing anyway i'm gonna end this video here it's probably long enough but thank you so much for watching if you do want to join the book club it's going to be linked down below i'm so excited about it or the group chat or whatever you want to be part of as well as all my social media are linked down below as always and i'll see you in my next video very very soon bye